Okay, so this is you. All right. So, what do you think? I mean, obviously, we had a conversation when you came in. I thought you were doing eight thirty-three, so you said you're doing seven thirty. I'm something. sure it was seven twenty something. Yeah. Okay. Um, in fact, have I got it on here? I'm kind of intrigued. And uh, no, maybe not. Maybe. Oh. All right. Ah. Is that? It's Corinne, she's one of ours. Um, Tasha. That's oh, there's that start time. That start time. There we go. I was in a hurry. <laughs> That's the start time. There we go. So I recorded that as well now. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, that's put my mind at rest now. You've got 8.33. I should have noticed oh, everyone had 8.33. 8.30 something. Yeah. All right, so, um, so 7.30 something is, is your kind of time. All right, so that's, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, all right. No, yeah, good. Doesn't everyone? No, absolutely. That's so, um, seven thirty-three is actually a reasonable standard. So you'd be, you'd be probably uh, around right about Rosie. Kind of where Rosie is at the moment. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe a bit quicker maybe, than Rosie. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's improved quite a bit. So yeah. So you'd be kind of in the middle yeah. of our squad. Um, and what's your kind of event? Would you say that you target? Well, I have a. This is my first year at Charlton. Okay. And I'm doing an iron half Ironman in September with Rosie. Okay. Are you doing um, Weymouth? Okay. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine with that. Okay. Good. So that's your target, and that's why we. Is that giving you a bit of focus for swimming? Yeah. I mean, okay. my swimming, I'm. It's my better one of the three. Okay. My running is hideous, but my swimming is. But I want to improve my swimming because. Yeah. I yeah. Can. And did you swim as a child? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I kind of, you can normally kind of tell or you get a bit of an inkling from watching people in the, in the, the pool, the way they move in the water. Um, I kind of, I suspect that you may well have been. Were you, what kind of level did you get to? I did um, county level okay. until I was about 13. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'd stop by 13 because ponies came along. Yeah. Ponies, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, you've done her a, a big favour by getting her to swim early. Pre-puberty, if you learn to swim well pre-puberty, right. you carry that for your whole life. Right. If you try and learn to swim after that, it's more difficult. I'd know that. Right. Personally. Okay. <laughs> right. Do you swim? Having learned in the last three years. Okay. All right. I've okay. been <laughs> terrified of water. Right. It's, it's tricky when you're an adult yeah. to, to pick stuff up. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And what do you think is holding you back? What do you think is your main? Um, I think my breathing. Okay. What, what, because what? I can't do every three. And I, just I can every three, start you at change, three. Yeah. yeah, and then I just can't, yeah. and then I go to get two. Tired. Yeah. Right. I can oh. swim forever in a day. Yeah. Just at my steady poodle pace. Yeah. But okay. I want my poodle pace to, to be a bit quicker. quicker. And you start to run out of puff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, lesson number one, thing number one, when looking at anyone swimming about improving them is their breathing. Right. We've got to get the breathing right, because if the breathing isn't right, like I said, you could go all day long, but you won't get any faster because you're going to run out of time. You've got to get the breathing right. Um, so we'll have a really close look at that today. And even if you just go away from here today thinking that you, you know what to do to sort your breathing out, that's going to take you so far once yeah. you get your breathing under control. So, all right. Anything else? And I don't tilt my body enough. I don't twist enough. Okay. Because when I learned to swim, you had to touch your hands and you had to stay flat. Yeah, yeah. And now yeah. it's changed a lot. It used to be thumb first entry. Yeah. Um, touch hands. Yeah. It's, it changes all the time, yeah. but and the reality is, there's no, there's no, there's no right or wrong way of swimming. You get Olymp Olympic swimmers who pull through straight and don't rotate enough or over rotate, but it's whatever works for you to get you through the water the fastest. So we'll 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 have a look. So let's see what's going on then from from the side. So, first of all, poolside view, and this is obviously what the coach normally sees. And what we look at from this side is we see uh, what the recovery of the stroke is like over the top of the water, so as your arm is coming over the top of the surface, and also what your head positioning is like. Now, I'm just going to play this through. So, on the right-hand side, 
nice bit of clearance over the top of the water. So for an open water swimmer, that would be good. Yeah. You don't want to be too dragging your hands across too close to the surface because it's choppy. Or well, there's yeah. people's heads in the way. Yeah. So a nice high recovery, which is fine. Just watching this. And here we can see what you what you were talking about before, a little bit towards yeah. heading over towards the centre. And maybe the hand is coming in too flat, so the whole arm is coming in together. Yeah, yeah. So there's different ways of recovering. Um, let's see if there's anyone here actually, but yeah, see that lady there. See her the way she she recovers her arm. elbow comes up high and the arm swings through. So more of a classic kind of high elbow cool recovery, whereas you're kind of what we'd call a bit more of a swinger. So, um, always get some, always get some. Um, in terms of the arms swing around a little bit more, so there's nothing wrong with that, it's just different. It's just, so, we have to um, work with the way you naturally move through the water. We'll go through that in more of a bit. So, the hand is coming in a bit flat, so if the hand comes in flat, you imagine that is your paddle. If you're canoeing and you put a and you put a paddling flat, then you've then got to drop it down and then you've got to pull it back, right? Whereas if you put the paddle in like this, you're straight in a position. You're more in a position to immediately start pulling through, right? So entering hand flat like this is just going to make you start to push down first and then maybe pull through the water. So we're going to have to get you spearing in a little bit more. But again, we'll go through that in a bit more detail. So on the left hand side. Similar high recovery. And this side actually spears in better. See, the left hand side is spearing into the water more. Yeah. I've had a dodgy right shoulder, so maybe that's, the okay. that's yeah. what's compensating. Yeah, okay. So you have an imbalance there. Yeah. That's okay. So maybe that's, that's what that is. Yeah, so you're coming around the side of one and then coming up yeah. and spearing in more with the other. So what I'm also looking at here is a head position. Let's take it back a little bit. We want our head position to be nice and low. It's not too bad. I'm waiting for you to breathe to this side actually, just to see if we can uh, see you breathe to the left. You did do some bilateral breathing because I saw you obviously yeah, weren't doing the first bit. Maybe it was on the way back. So what I'm looking at here is to see how high you lift your head. And we can see here, actually, it's quite nice the way you're heading in position. You've got a nice little bow wave forming here. And that's what we want. Right. Because the bow wave comes around. You're in the water like this, the bow wave comes around. And then actually drops. So you think about the bow of a boat, the front of the boat. The water breaks over the front of the boat, the boat as it's going through the water. And then you see it kind of dip down, and then it comes back up. That little dip is what you breathe into. So it allows you to keep your head low, but still breathe. All right. That's fine. That's fine. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at your breathing. All right. So, from that angle, the only thing I've really seen is the right arm is mainly coming, maybe coming in a little bit too flat. Apart from that, all fine from that position. And this is that right arm coming in low. So the hand enters, and then the rest of the arm enters pretty much at the same time. Yeah. And then it extends forwards. So if you think about what generates, again, what generates propulsion is things pushing that way. So we want to be getting water pushed back this direction. Whereas if you think what your hand is doing here, yeah, still it's pushing this way. Down, down. So if we look for the point where we start to generate some forward propulsion, Maybe not until we get down here, where we actually start pushing things this way. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe from the left hand side as well. I'll have a look at your breathing on the way back, so it'll be a better angle on the way back. Okay. I'm not too flat in the water, am I? I don't twist as much the one way, but. So your rotation? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a look on the way back. Doesn't mean that light looks okay. So you want to be about 45 to 60 degrees, and that's pretty much where you are there. So your rotation is, isn't isn't too bad. You haven't got much of a kick going on. It's fairly gentle. Your toes are nice and pointed. That's good. So you've got some decent flexibility in your ankles. 
So what you're suffering from really, I so say we haven't looked at the breathing yet, but what we're suffering from really is a little bit of a lack of proportion. Right. Because of the catch at the front of the stroke isn't doing much for you. There's a lot of pushing down and not enough pulling back. Just play this through. Have a look the other way. Here we go. That's what made me think you were a swimmer. <laughs> my kick off my yeah. foot, yeah. <laughs> The yeah, dolphin kicks off the wall. <laughs> People don't do that unless they've learnt it from somewhere. There we go. That's good. You'd probably gain you'd probably gain a second of length just by being able to push off well and give a do a dolphin kick. You're amazing how many people can't turn. Right. So that we're that. Good with that's that. good. We're good with that. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's have a look at this head then. Breath? Now, you're quite right. What's happening here is you're taking too long breathing. So, so I'm already breathing out before I come in. So we'll have a closer look at that in a minute, about the actual breath, when the breath's coming in and out. I suspect what's happening is you're either holding your breath too much, so you're having to breathe out and in mm -hmm. as your turn, therefore you need longer to take the breath. Or, or it could be a combination of these things, you're losing support at the front end of the stroke. So you're feeling the need, you might feel the need to lift a little bit higher with the head to continue giving you the time to breathe. Otherwise you'll run out of breathing time. Yeah. So And that's what happens to me when the I push off out. my walk. Right. Because I'm under the quite Okay, you get a bit Yeah, out of breath. get short. Okay. So what I'm waiting for is, a, is an opportunity to see if you're holding your breath, because that's the, that's the really big one, which I suspect what you're doing. Yeah, okay, so taking your breath here, that's fine. One goggle in, one goggle out of the water, that's perfect positioning for the head. All right, so head position isn't a problem. Your body is nice and high in the water, that's all good. We know we've got this big, we've got this push down here, mm -hmm. so we need to sort that out. You're spending a long time breathing, so this arm is going early, and you're still breathing. So what should happen is you should get the support at the front end, and that arm is what you lean on when you're breathing. Yeah. That's going too early, so it's pulling you down. It starts to pull you down, which means you have to lift the head to keep the keep your head above the water. So taking a breath. And what I'm looking at here, let's see if I can. Um, work very well. Let's try again. <laughs> I missed you. You totally missed me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're taking a breath and what we should have is a constant bubble of air coming out the mouth. Now there's some coming out. What I suspect is happening is when you, it's actually not helping very much, it's a bit blurry. When you turn to breathe or when your body, when you, when you start and subconsciously thinking you're about to breathe, you'll be exhaling the bulk of that air. Mm. All right. And we can see just at the last second there, yeah. you're blasting air out at that point. By the time you turn to breathe there, you should be that should all gone. And that means all you've got to do then is in, breathe in, head back in the water. So you're actually going breathing out, <sighs> you're breathing out and in. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you start to get tired and need bigger breaths, you're going to spend longer on your side, maybe over rotate, and then lose even more support. It's all kind of, it's all linked to the breathing yeah. so far. Yeah, see, breathing out, see, breathe in, and your head should be immediately coming back. But you're still there, still there, still there, still there, and then it starts to breathe. Start, sorry, it starts yeah. turning it back in, and then your arm's gone around by that point. So I want to show you, uh, I'm not sure if it's on this actually, but I'll show you, see if we can see Rebecca Adlington compare, Let's see if we can get her. Uh, here we go. So. You and Rebecca Adlington side by side, love. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, in fact, what we'll do is we get you to the same point.
There's a subtle difference in her hand position as well here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes a big difference because that's the engagement of the catch. That will pull the rest of the hand down. That will mean you've got to go down this way and then you've got to go over the top. So we've got to get you to get those fingertips down. All right, so play you through. So you start to breathe out at that point. Start to breathe out, start to breathe out. Still breathing out and then you're taking a breath. Let's take Rebecca back. She just breathes about every week, so I have to wait for her to breathe at some point. Here we go. In fact, saying that, she's breathing out quite late as well. Thanks, Rebecca, for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but so she's breathing in. Yes. And she's not it. keeping her head there half as long. And as soon as her head is coming back in, look. She's breathing out. She's breathing out immediately. We spend most more time telling people to breathe out than we do telling them to breathe in. Yeah, I, I usually do have an issue with breathing whatever sport I seem to okay. take up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks like what she does actually is she breathes a lot out early on and then she holds a bit and then she starts to trickle it out towards mm. the end. Now what she's got is super body position. So she may actually decide, she may actually have made a conscious decision that it's actually beneficial for her to hold air in her lungs because she's super buoyant. Some people need to lift the chest up to get the legs lower, otherwise they kick out the water. Yeah. So there's, there may well be that she's made a decision for that. But the point is that she turns to breathe, breathes, head back in. It's quite snappy. Right, let's get rid of Rebecca. So what we're going to do with you is we are going to do some... If you're doing this at EBT, you might have done these drills, I guess. Sink down drills. No. No? Here, watch this. So you go in the deep end and you breathe out. You breathe out. If you're any good at this, you can go right to the bottom. If you're not so good, you bob around. You don't go anywhere. Oh, that would be me then. He's holding. He's, he's like, he's trying to get to the bottom. And it only takes a few. These two go up and down like anything. Mm. It only takes a few for him to start to realise. So you're still struggling, but he's getting better now. And you start to tune into how much you actually need to breathe out to get that air out. It's really important. It's really important because that is what's throwing out your timing and your stroke. All right. It will make it will. What happens when you hold your breath a little bit too much? You get a build-up of CO2, and you start to get that kind of anxious kind of feeling where you might start to panic a little bit, or if you're open water swimming, you might get a bit gaspy. Um, that's all related to breath holding. You don't right. feel that at all when you're swimming, that kind of yeah. shortness. Yeah. So it will certainly help with that. Um, holding your breath will affect your body position. So well, your body position is not too bad actually. So I'm looking at. I'm looking at your. <laughs> Subtle. I'm looking at your uh, your body position related to the, the lane rope there, and actually, your you imagine where your spine is. It's actually not too bad. So you're not too bad. Your legs a little bit low. Your, sorry, as in your feet, but they're not too bad. They should be breaking the surface of the water ideally, but nothing too much there to worry about. And ultimately, as far as as far as I'm concerned, your kick is there really for balance to the stroke rather than actual propulsion. Even though it's amazing swimmers, Ian Thorpe will get. Seven or eight percent proportion. I only got size three it. feet, so I'm, they're not going to be much Forget use it. to me in the water. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of them as there to balance up the rest of your stroke. That's all. And you can, you can you've got nice your ankles and nicely bent. I don't know if you've done any sport in the past, which has given you flexibility in your ankles. Right. Okay. Well, you can see that. You can see that there. You're onto a winner already. <laughs> all right. So good natural body position. Nice. Um, Flexion in the ankles there, all good. Breathing and uh, your stroke. All right, so we'll have a look at that now. From above, there's your little dolphin kick up. Off we go. So, that's a good demonstration actually of, this is exactly what we're trying to achieve, is we're trying to get, us, get ourselves extending in front of the shoulders or if you push off, you can have your hands together, but out front, 
shoulder width apart is absolutely fine. And hopefully we'll see that when you continue to swim, as in you will spear in in front of the shoulder and extend in front of the shoulder. But you probably, you've indicated already that you think you might be towards the center. Let's have a look. Lovely and straight, lovely, really good. Okay, now, <laughs> flags in the way. But what you can see here is a little kick there, see that? Yeah. That is because that arm is going. That arm is going because you're breathing. These are all links. All right, sort of breathing out. That arm won't go work close quite so early. You won't split, split the legs. Right. All related. So some coaches will get you to fix your kick. Some coaches will get you to fix your stroke. This is related to your breathing. All right. So don't need to worry about that. Here we go. So you're spearing in. Entering the water in front of your shoulder, which is good. But if you can see where your hand is headed, that way, not that way. So again, if I show you, and it's good, I, I don't, some people don't like it when I show you elites, because it's like, well, I'm not an elite, what's it got to do with me? But it's nice to visualize yeah. what, you need to be. what it needs to look like, yeah. So to show you um, John Van Hazel, who's uh, an Olympian, and it's the guy, I don't know if you've seen Mr. Smooth, but it's, it's who Mr. Smooth is based on. Oh, right. Have you seen the Mr. Smooth animation? <laughs> this thing is an app which is free to download. And uh, I to say it wasn't working then, but Oh, wait. It's a bit of crash now, isn't it? Oh, there we go. So this is an animation where you can just play around with this. you can just spend time examining yeah, backwards now, what's he doing? Yeah, it's yeah, like, we go. backwards. <laughs> Don't watch him going backwards for God's sake. Alright, so you can spend time watching this from all different angles and you can see what it should look like. Alright, so if we look at Mr. Smooth from this angle, enters in front of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Stays in front of the shoulder. It's easier. It doesn't do slow motion very well, this thing. And then pulls through, the hand pulls through under the shoulder. So you think, you spear in, extend forward, and then pull through. And it's all in line with the shoulder. That's how you stay in alignment. So this animation was based on this guy here, John Van Hazel. He said to have the smoothest stroke. These ridiculously long arms, yeah. long body, but let's see if I can find an overhead. Here we go. Oops. Here we go. Entering yeah. straight, staying straight. That's what we want. All right. We don't want anything kind of heading sideways. So I need a straighter arm and go in. Yeah. So we'll spend some time working on your alignment as well, which combined with your breathing and the other bits and bobs should get you going much straighter in the water. All right, let's get rid of him. And what you can normally work out from this is if you've got a tendency to swim in the open water, you've got a tendency to veer over to one side, then you can normally see why from this kind of thing. So, you know, you're heading that way, and if you play it through, that one's a bit straighter. So we've got one kind of at that angle, and one that angle, you may find that you're, you swim around right. to the right. This doesn't always work, but sometimes it's an indication. So on the left hand side, not so bad on the left, which is your shoulder, the one with the, the, left the not the so good. Arm. Oh, that's right a good arm. The... Okay, all right. So your left, your left is a good arm. Okay, all right. So that's the one that's going really that's bent. going over there. Yeah. And then well, you're right, right. Actually, is better straight wise, isn't it? Yeah. Although it's still. Well, it spears in and it stays straightish. I wouldn't worry too much about that. That's nice. So it's the left arm mainly. So we'll see if we can get you balanced up a little bit. See if we can get you a bit straighter in the water. There's not much wrong with your stroke. Right. There's not much wrong with your stroke. You've got some of the big wins ticked off. Body position, head position. Nice kick. 
they're the things that most people have a problem with. For you, it's the breathing and the propulsion. So, just to finish off then, and then we'll get you in the water and do some, uh, do some, go through some of these drills that we'll go through then. So, from this angle, yeah. So, turning to breathe. I'll get you doing some drills on the side. In fact, I'll show you it here while we're, while we're here. Uh, uh, it's going the wrong place. It's been dragged into the wrong place. Here we go. Now, do you have any fins? Okay. Are they long fins or short fins? Okay, you need long fins. Long fins are for drills. Short fins of a kick work. Right. We don't bother with kick work. Like I say, kicking is for your balancing your stroke. Don't worry about it. If you do, you, you can do drills with short fins on, but you're going to have to work harder. The idea of the long fins is that you can do a nice relaxed kick and you can focus on what you're doing without having to work so hard because right, yeah. you're getting the propulsion from the fins. All right. So that's it's definitely worth investing in a pair of long fins. So, kicking on the side drill. On your side all the way, and if you look at Paul's hand here, you get used to holding yourself in this position with that wrist tipped, and you're in ready in a position to start the catch from there. If you look at yours, yours is a bit locked out, yeah. and we'll go through the difference between that and that. Right, yeah. I can take a catch from there. I can't take. I can't. No. Take a stroke from there. You know, but it's a bit well, yours might bend that way, but <laughs> <laughs> mine doesn't bend that way. No. <laughs> All right. You might be able to win it with that as well. Yeah. You might be able to do it both ways. No. All right. So, we need to get you like this. That will make a big difference to you as well. Just the position of that arm. Just get used to being in that position. So, kicking on the side drill. That's all you do. Like that. You can also practice your breathing while you do it. Look. Obviously, you're breathing out. That's all, okay? And then, and this is where, I suppose they don't do these drills at EVT if they're BTF coaches. We don't do any, I don't do any drills really. We right. just do a board and off we swim. Okay, okay. Um, unless we go in the drill lanes, we only have three lanes. Right. And we have a drill lane which is really for the novice. Okay, so, so yeah. So we have two lanes that just swim, right. and that's hence why I'm here. Yeah, okay, all right, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. So, and then 616 is the next drill. So, kicking on the side, same as kicking on the side, you just saw, but we start to introduce a stroke, all right? But we do just take one stroke, and then we really focus on extending in and then getting that arm straight and then back on kicking on the side again. So again, we're making sure, let's see if we can find it from above, we focus on keeping that laid arm straight, spearing in, staying straight. And then no surprise really, 636. Six. And you can see how it's wrong one. No way. Ah. Ignore all these when you watch it back, all these errors. I'm a professional, honestly. <laughs> All right, so one, two, three. We start to build up the full stroke and make sure to maintain that straightness all the time as we go. All right. Um, that for now is all we're going to do because if I give you too much to work on, it's going to be <laughs> your brain will explode. All right. So you work on some really quality stuff. So your breathing and your alignment. I'm not going to work too much on your catch. See what we get on with time. But I'm not. I think that if we start sorting out the breathing and the alignment, the catch will improve by itself. All right. So we might get that for free. If that makes sense. We like anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's just see. There's a straight arm. So you're pulling through quite straight. And just so as it's recorded, really, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, we'll look at Rebecca again just quickly. Here we go.
So hand hit down, and then she gets what we call a really, uh, an early vertical fall off. So the elbow stays high, and that hand turns into the paddle. Whereas, as we know, what we've got with you is we've got a push down. Mm -hmm. So push down rather than a, a pull back. All right. So if we get time, we'll, we'll do a bit of work on that. But I suspect that will sort itself out when we do some of the other stuff. It will improve anyway. All right. I'm just going to play this through and see if there's anything else worth discussing at this stage. Yeah, that's the crossover coming that's in, coming crossover. across. Yeah. So we've already, we've already looked at that. That's the one that comes in a little bit flat, pushes down. Maybe looking a little bit too far forward, maybe, but not too concerned about that. So you can see you're looking, maybe mm -hmm. looking at the camera or looking towards the end there. Not too worried about that. Okay. With me so far? Yeah. Yeah? Understand? Yeah. Any questions? No. All right. Is it all right? Is it kind of what you're expecting? Yeah, it is. yeah? Okay. All right. Because some people come to books expect different stuff and it's, well, it's a bit of an eye opener for them. Um, but it's nothing major. It's nothing major. And it's, it's, it's stuff which will hopefully really make quite a quick difference to you. But let's get you in the water and let's, let's get on with it. Let me just kind of start, start stopping.